I'm guessing that 1981 was a pretty darn good year to own a movie theater. Raiders of the Lost Ark debuted, dominating ticket sales. But that year also produced films such as Superman II, On Golden Pond, Arthur, Stripes, and Chariots of Fire. Among all those fan favorites, an Australian movie about a World War I battle that didn't involve Americans found it hard to compete for attention from U.S. moviegoers. One of the stars of the movie, titled Gallipoli, was a young actor unknown to many at the time. It's possible you know him now. Mel Gibson? Gallipoli was based on an infamous campaign between combined British forces, including Australians, and the Ottoman Empire on a peninsula of what is modern-day Turkey. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers died in this campaign that stretched on for months, relying heavily on trench warfare. A small fraction of this 111-minute movie showed battle scenes until the very end, when the lead character is killed in a charge on the Ottoman trenches. Most of the movie set us up for this fatal climax. And for me, the most intense scenes came right before that charge, as the Australian soldiers prepared to follow orders and rise out of their trenches, heading for the enemy. And this is just after having seen wave after wave of soldiers before them failing to get anywhere near the opposing lines, killed by withering machine gun fire. In those final moments before their charge, these soldiers frantically wrote farewell notes for their loved ones and attached valuables so they could be delivered to those loved ones. It was a gut-wrenching scene in the movie, watching these actors portray men who knew with absolute certainty that they were about to die on the battlefield and accomplish nothing. How did the actors prepare themselves for this scene? Better yet, how did the real-life soldiers prepare themselves? This was not a made-up Hollywood story. This was history. There was no happily ever after. Never having been in the military myself, I've not been on the front lines of a battle, waiting my turn to enter the fray, preparing myself mentally for what was to come. I can only imagine. Likewise, I can only imagine what Jesus was thinking and feeling as preparations were being made for what we call the Last Supper. He knew how that night would end. Among the preparations that would need to be made for their Passover meal, he knew he must also prepare his disciples. He had been doing that for three years, but this is when the rubber would meet the road, so to speak. Jesus had a bit more preparation work to accomplish with precious few hours left. So we'll be talking more about preparation later on in this special Monday Thursday worship service. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, and welcome to the online worship service of Robinson Memorial Presbyterian Church in Gastonia, North Carolina for April 14th, 2022. This is Monday Thursday. The word Monday is derived from the same word as mandate. On this last full night of Jesus' earthly life, 
He gave his disciples then, and his disciples of today, certain commands or mandates. The most famous of those is that we love each other, perhaps even the most important. Just as I have loved you, love one another. It wasn't a suggestion or a recommendation. It was a mandate. Love one another. He also mandated the breaking of bread and drinking of the fruit of the vine. It's a way for his followers to remember him. Remember him and the sacrifice he would make for all of mankind. We call that communion. We'll be participating in communion later on in this service, and we invite you to join us from wherever you may be. You'll want to have ready some form of bread and a drink. It could be wine or maybe, as we do here at Robinson, grape juice. It's not the same thing as being done in person with others joining in. But for now, this may be the only way some of you watching can participate, which we hope you will do. On Good Friday, our church will be participating in a procession of the cross with three of our fellow Presbyterian congregations here in Gastonia. At 6 p.m., we'll gather at New Hope Presbyterian Church to begin, traveling by caravan to the other three churches, including here. Then on Sunday, we will have a sunrise service at 7 a.m. in our memorial garden and our primary Easter celebration at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. For those of you participating by video, a pre-recorded version of the sunrise service will be available for viewing by about 7.30 a.m. As for tonight, we start this service with our responsive calls to worship. You'll find the words on your screen. Return to the Lord, the God of all mercies, for a feast of love has been prepared for his own. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. O oh, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Happy are they who take refuge in God. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn for this service is, There is a Redeemer. Please join in singing as Ashley provides the music.
How are people to recognize us as followers of Jesus? <laughs> it is very simple. It will be by how we treat people, how we kneel to serve them, how we are willing to share our lives with others. Let us confess how we have not always loved others as Jesus loves us, as we pray our unison prayer of confession, seeking God's forgiveness. Liberator of all the nations, we are not always willing to love one another, especially when others have wronged us for whatever reasons. We hold grudges rather than confront our aggressors. We talk about them rather than to them. As Judas betrayed Jesus, we continue to deceive the risen Christ. We confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, the table is not yet spread with goodwill. Forgive our reluctance to humble ourselves and wash us anew with the waters of new life. And all God's people said, Amen. The Holy Spirit testifies to us, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. And I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Our Psalter lesson for this evening comes just from Psalm 116, verses 1 through 2, and then 12 through 19. Listen now for the word of our Lord. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. What? Shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Our Gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 22, verses 7 through 23. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. 
Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed. But woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. At the conclusion of very nearly every Sunday worship service, after the singing is done, we've prayed a lot, and you've listened to what passes for a sermon, providing insights into our faith and bringing the Bible to life as best we can. After all of that, I'm quite aware that the burning question on the minds of most of those here in the sanctuary that day does not involve deeper theological issues raised during the service. I'd like to think that's what you're talking about, but realistically, <laughs> I know the main question will generally always be, what are we doing about lunch? Now, I'm not condemning those conversations. Most times, I'm just as interested in knowing the answers as you. Where do you want to go? Well, I don't know. Where do you want to go? Even Jesus was interested in dining plans. There are a lot of shared meals chronicled in our Gospels, including the most well-known meal, that last Passover supper Jesus would share with his close friends and disciples. At the beginning of today's reading from Luke, Jesus instructs Peter and John to make preparations for the meal. First, they must secure a place for 13 to dine that evening. Now, it's not like Jerusalem was teeming with restaurants that had private dining rooms from which the disciples could choose. They didn't have Yelp or some other app on their smartphones to find a diner. However, because of the importance of the Passover meal and so many Jewish people traveling to Jerusalem for it, residents welcomed visitors to hold meals in rooms they had available. Jesus told Peter and John how they would find a space, by following a specific stranger, a man carrying a jar of water, which was not as difficult as it might sound, because women generally were the ones carrying water. 
Securing a place would only have been the first step in the preparations. A suitable lamb without blemishes must be obtained to be roasted whole. There were the bitters and bread and drinks to gather. Preparing for the Passover meal was, and is, serious business. The Jewish people had been commanded to observe this meal annually to remind them of the first Passover back in Egypt when God spared them from the angel of death and freed them from slavery. That night, each Hebrew family followed God's instructions for the meal. Unleavened bread because there would be no time to waste. They had to prepare to leave their homes in the morning, packing up all their belongings for a long journey. They had to prepare. The time was now. It was going to happen. The meal was spiced with a sense of urgency. The Jewish people reenact this meal every year to remember what God had done for their ancestors. It was important to Jesus that he and his disciples remember together that night in Jerusalem. Remember and prepare. Jesus had his own preparations to make that night, preparing his disciples for the future. In the Gospel of John, we read about Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, serving them instead of the other way around. You need to do this for each other. You need to learn the real meaning of loving your brothers and sisters, your neighbors. And not talk among you about who is going to be considered greater than the others. You need to prepare yourselves for humble service. You need to prepare others for the future. My work here will soon end, but yours is just beginning. He's still telling us today to prepare. And he gave his disciples and us a method for remembering a new covenant. God had made a covenant with the Hebrew people centuries before. Now the covenant would be with the whole world. Jesus gave each of them bread. He gave it to them. They hadn't asked or demanded the bread. He gave of his own free will, just as he would soon be giving his own life for the sake of the world. I want you to remember this moment. Remember it often. Remember every time you sit with others in a common meal. Remember what I gave you. He passed around the cup and told them to divide up its contents among them. Do this often to remember the new covenant between God and the world. To remind you that the terms of this covenant were written with my blood as the ink. Now, unlike Matthew and Mark, Luke writes that among those sharing in the bread and the wine, was Judas Iscariot. Whereas the other 11 disciples were nourished by the bread and wine, Judas did not have faith in Jesus. He had his own plans, plans that Jesus knew had to occur, but woe to the one who carried them out. Later that night, Judas would betray Jesus with a kiss. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul warned about taking the Eucharist without preparing one's heart. Examine yourselves, he wrote, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment against themselves. Don't 
just go through the motions of communion. Prepare yourselves. Sharing in this meal means joining in fellowship with others. In communion shared with fellow Christians, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is right here in this room with us, in your room, with you. Just as Jesus was in the room that night with his disciples, preparing them for a new reality, a new world. As the Hebrews that night in Egypt prepared for their freedom, the disciples were being prepared for new life. And tonight, we too sh share in a taste of what is to come. The Holy Spirit has prepared us for tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds to partake of communion, please sing with the hymn, I Will Remember Thee. The lyrics will be on your screen. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. With thanksgiving, let us offer God our grateful praise, beginning with the words on your screen. May the God of last suppers be with you, and also with you. Open your hearts to God this night. 
we open them to the one who came for us in love. In the midst of uncertainty and fear, give thanks and praise God. It is fitting that we give thanks and praise to the Lord. It is right and fitting, our joy and our salvation, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with the whole company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God most holy, and we sing with joy, Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe, you bring forth bread from the earth and create the fruit of the vine. You made us in your image and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot you and our faith was weak, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to deliver us from bondage to death and slavery to sin. In humility he descends from your heights to kneel in obedience to love's commands. He who is boundless takes on the bondage of our sin. He who is free takes our place in death's prison. In the deserts of our wanderings, he sustains us, giving us his body as manna for our weariness. The cup of suffering which he drank has become for us the cup of salvation. In his death, he ransomed us from death's domain. In his resurrection, he opened the way to eternal life. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ, and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. And now we raise our voices in unison, praying the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one bread, we 
who are many, are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat. Let us pray. God of grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, left us this holy meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and blood. May we who have celebrated this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.